Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be looking at the artist Stephen Cohen. Uh, Stephen Cohen currently resides in France, but he was born in Johannesburg in 1962. He is a performance artist that uses shock to grab attention. He has represented South Africa extensively in many exhibitions and top galleries around the world. And he was a medical student at WITS for a couple of days when he decided to change his course to literature and psychology. From a young age, Cohen's sexuality was pointed out to him as other. He was bullied for his outright homosexuality. That, and his Jewish upbringing, made him question identity intensely. And this was explored in his early works on canvas and furniture. But it was when Cohen started his performances, or as he calls them, his undancing, that the world noticed him. He found himself communicating his years of anguish, and there were many people who shared his pain. He has been arrested in France for his subversive art, yet there is still a demand for his performances. If we look at two major events that had an impact on Cohen's artwork, the one is that he had to do compulsory national service in the SADF, the South African Defence Force. The second is that he had a long hospitalisation, which made him aware of his body and decided to use it as his main artistic medium. In the SADF, he took silkscreen lessons and expressed ideas about the following topics. Homosexuality, white masculinity, his Jewish origins, the patriarchal nature of government, apartheid, and his interaction with society. So Cohen uses performance art, so he's using his body to express um, what he's trying to say. And he normally clothes his body in elaborately designed costumes and paints it and uses it to create unusual performance art and interactions with other people. His art, which is also called living art, exceeds mere performance. People don't go to a gallery or theater. The living performances are not scheduled, but are interventions which occur in non-art areas, and they are art unlikely. Recently, he has had more gallery-specific art performances. These works do not exist beyond the performance, only afterwards in photographs or videos. And contemporary art such as Cohen's is difficult to understand because his strange media and methods do not only puzzle, but they shock. He has said that his performance art may use states of physical undressing, but it is about spiritual nakedness, not exhibitionism. People of the outside step right into the work. They can change the choreography, deny access or say, come this way, or the plot, yell and shout, hit, call the police, and his work is constructed at the moment by whoever chooses to become part of it, in addition to him. The first work we look at is a 2001-2002 performance piece, and it's called Chandelier. He first performed Chandelier in a squatter camp in downtown Johannesburg or Newtown uh, that was in the process of being demolished in a state-sponsored eviction, reminiscent of the high days of apartheid. So apartheid had the Group Areas Act that forced people to get evicted from areas, and now something very similar was happening in the year 2001. The work exists as both live performance and video documentation of public intervention. In this performance, we see Cohen dressed in an illuminated wrought iron chandelier tutu and fabulous stilettos, a sight in stark contrast to the black and brutal landscape of a homeless community living on the fringes of the city. Here, Cohen appears as a ghost, a metaphor that echoes the social alienation experienced by the inhabitants of the peripheral location in which the work is set. Throughout the piece, we can see Cohen's luminous white body, dressed in a chandelier, itself a symbol of Western decadence, interacting with the forlorn landscape and abandoned community about to be displaced. Cohen perceives the forced evictions as a ballet of violence and performs his sympathy for the poor and underclass in an enigmatic, haunting chandelier. He described this interaction, sorry, intervention, should I say, as a creation amidst destruction. Cohen is both underdressed and overdressed, both naked and surrounded by crystals. During this hours-long performance on high heels over the uneven ground, he undanced 
in his weighty tutu for these newly homeless people. As darkness fell, the photon lights of the chandelier speckled Cohen's figure with light against the scene of devastation. I lift my arms. I appear to be directing the destruction. If I raise my eyes and palms to God, it is as though I am also suffering. When I kneel in the dirt, it reads as a prayer for peace on earth. Reactions varied between sexual aggression to quasi-religious wonderment. For Cohen, the aim of Chandelier was to shed light onto what is seldom seen. Artists have always painted these social concerns of their time, and this is what I'm doing, he states. The next work by Cohen was created in 2012. It is a performance piece with video, and it's called Cradle of Humankind. The initial concept of this piece was evolution, yet it ended up being, as Cohen states, about love. Cohen filmed footage in the Stadtfontein and Swartkrans caves, the places where the first fossils of hominids can be found. In the footage, he and his mother's former domestic worker, Nonsa Klamini, explore the caves. Whilst in the performance, they appear as the first humans, emerging in their contrasting skin colours, awaiting anthropological inspection and scrutiny. Both Glamini and Cohen are scantily clad. Cohen wears a corset, incredibly high heels, eyelashes on his ears, and a transparent structure covers his genitals. Glamini is almost completely naked, barring the moments where she and Cohen wear fiber optic tutus. At one point, Cohen has a balloon strapped to his chest, and at another, he has a warthog rump attached to his own derriere. During the performance, we can see Cohen go through the motions of colonizing Flamini. He chains her up at one point. There are references to black subjugation and white guilt. There are references to primal urges and oedipal constructs. Cohen's biological mother was an alcoholic. Thus, Flamini became a replacement figure for her. We see this made visual when he arrives in a clear sphere and Flamini armed with bow and arrow, helps to free him, him, almost like a birthing process. The image of Glamini as a Khoisan on display roots, reverts back to images of Sarki Bartman and the intense public humiliation that she faced. Cohen grew up during apartheid and openly admits that he was a racist before Glamini opened his eyes. At the time of the performance, Glamini was 92 years old and Cohen, 50. The intimacy between the two during the performance of, speaks of their strong bond. Nudity is not sexualized, but rather a means of expressing sameness. So many ethnographic images of naked black women have been created and reproduced, yet when we are confronted with this nudity directly, we feel as though Glamini may have been exploited in this work. Cohen admits that he will only allow her to perform for as long as she feels comfortable doing so. She has travelled abroad with him in order to perform Cradle of Humankind elsewhere, and after each performance, she relishes in the love that the audience has for her. Cohen changes the anthem heard in the background according to the country where the performance is happening to comment on how everyone is from the same history and we all had a part to play in colonialism, slavery and the general othering of people. The last work we'll look at by Stephen Cohen was created in 1998. It's a performance piece and it was called Jew. This work parodies and challenges anti-Semitic stereotypes by using haunting symbols and hunting symbols to address social persecution. The Star of David on his chest is obscured by the Mercedes car crash wig. This was a, a wig that they used for an advert. He wears a corset made from a dressmaker dummy a gas mask with an exhaust pipe and tusks attached to it, as well as an elephant foot and a bull hoof attached to a pair of shoes. Jew uses crutches to balance. This performance is less overtly sexual than his other works, so the public response was closer to curiosity and warmth. Symbols are important in identity formation along ethnic or nationalist lines, and Cohen uses them to reveal the ideological construction of identity. The use of the key sign of Judaism, the Star of David, 
questions if such symbols always mean what they imply to mean and to whom they belong. He often attaches it with blood to his body, implying that it has been imposed with violence, like a sort of brand. Hence, he applies it also to his penis, a vital sign of identity formation in Judaism. After World War II, Jews were largely assimilated into whiteness. A new generation of Jews, no longer as culturally removed as their forebears, could enjoy, often with guilt, the comforts, benefits and opportunities afforded to whites in apartheid South Africa. There are many other works by Stephen Cohen, but as you can see, he's very controversial and his work deals with a lot of issues that we deal with in uh, South Africa after apartheid, issues that revert back to early colonial segregation that was further extended by the segregation during apartheid, issues of homophobia and gender inequality. And often we wonder if such extreme measures need to be taken for the public to become aware of what is going on. But I think it must be incredibly brave to be a performance artist in this day and age and to create works that Cohen does create uh, for fear of someone actually inflicting pain in, on your own body. So that is Stephen Cohen. I hope you enjoyed it.